semiconductor devices. The electronic devices were made of vacuum tubes, also called valves, like the diode valve which has two electrodes, anode, often called plate, and cathode or triode valve which has three electrodes, that is plate, cathode and grids, and pentode valve having five electrodes. It was realized that some solid state semiconductors and their junctions can be helpful of controlling the number and direction of flow of charge carriers through them. The discovery of semiconductor junction, that is junction diodes and transistors, replaced the vacuum tubes as they are small in size, operate at low voltage, consume small power having long life and high reliability. Classification of solids on the basis of their conductivity. On the basis of relative values of electrical conductivity, sigma and resistivity 1 by P, the solids can be classified into following categories. Metal conductors, these are those solids which have high conductivity and low resistivity. Insulators. These are those solids which have very low conductivity and very high resistivity. Semiconductors. These are those solids which have conductivity and resistivity in between metal conductors and insulators. Energy bands of solids. Band theory of solids. According to Bohr's theory of atomic spectra and the concept of electronic configuration, the electrons in an isolated atom have certain definite discrete amounts of energy corresponding to different shells and subshells. It means there are well-defined energy levels of electrons in an isolated atom. Due to this inter-atomic interaction, there is no appreciable modification in the energy levels of electrons in the inner shells. But there is a considerable modification in the case of energy levels of the electrons in the outer shell. This is due to the fact that the valence electrons are shared by more than one atom in the crystal. Difference between valency band conduction band and energy band gap. Valency band. In the energy band diagram of semiconductors, the valency band is a lower band belonging to valency electrons of the given crystal. Conduction band. In the energy band diagram of semiconductors, the conduction band is which the electrons are not present at zero Kelvin. Energy band gap. In the energy band diagram, energy band gap is the separation between highest energy level of valency band and lowest energy level in conduction band. Distinction between conductors or metals, semiconductors and insulators on the basis of their energy bands. Intrinsic semiconductors. Distinction between conductors semiconductors and insulators on the basis of their energy bands. Conductor. In conductors, either the conduction band is partially filled with electrons or the conduction band and valency band partly overlap each other. That is, there is no forbidden energy band gap between these two bands. Thus, the electrons are moving very nicely and conducting the charge also. Insulator In insulator, the valency band is completely filled but the conduction band is empty and the gap between the valency band and conduction band is very large. That is, the forbidden energy band gap 
is very large thus these insulator not allow to flow the electricity semiconductor in semiconductors same as insulator because the valence band is completely filled and the conduction band is empty and the forbidden energy band gap is less than the insulators as a result the semiconductor acquires small conductivity at room temperature semiconductor germanium is the best example for the intrinsic semiconductor in this germanium the four valence electrons form a four covalent bonds by sharing the electrons of neighboring four germanium atom each covalent bond shares two electrons one from each atom in this covalent bond each germanium atom in the crystal behaves as if the outermost orbit of each atom is complete with eight electrons having no free electrons in the germanium structure a pure semiconductor which is free of every impurity is called intrinsic semiconductor in intrinsic semiconductor at room temperature fermi level is about half way in the forbidden gap doping doping is process of deliberate addition of a desirable impurity atoms to a pure semiconductor to modify its properties in a controlled manner the impurity atoms added are called dopants doping of a semiconductor increases its electrical conductivity to a great extent extrinsic semiconductors extrinsic semiconductor n type semiconductor when pure semiconductors of silicon or germanium have four valence electrons is doped with pentavalent atoms say arsenic or phosphorus the four of the five valence electrons of the impurity atoms will form covalent bond by sharing the electrons with joining of the four atoms of silicon while the fifth electron is very loosely bound with the parent impurity atom and is comparatively free to move thus each impurity atom added donates one free electron to the crystal structure this impurity atoms which donate free electrons for conduction are called donor atoms since the conduction of electricity is due to the motion of the electrons that is negative charges or n type carriers therefore the resulting semiconductor is called donor type or n type semiconductor p type semiconductor when a pure semiconductor of germanium or silicon in which each atom has four valence electrons is doped with trivalent atoms say gallium or indium the three valence electron of the impurity atom will form covalent bond with a neighboring germanium atom this deficiency is completed by taking an electron from one of the germanium to germanium bond this makes indium ionized and creates a hole the trivalent atoms are called acceptor atoms and the conduction of electricity occurs due to motion of the holes thus the resulting semiconductor 
is called acceptor type or p type semiconductor a doped semiconductor or a semiconductor with suitable impurity atom added to it is called extrinsic semiconductor extrinsic semiconductors are of two types n type semiconductors p type semiconductors semiconductor device when a p type semiconductor crystal is brought into close contact with an n type semiconductor crystal the resulting arrangement is called a p minus n junction or junction diode formation of p minus n junction to make a p minus n junction the n type and p type silicon crystals are cut into thin slices called wafers if on a wafer of n type silicon an aluminum film is placed and heated to a high temperature say 5800 centigrade aluminum diffuses into silicon in this way a p type semiconductor such a formation of p region on n region is called p junction depletion region and barrier electric field in pn junction two important processes occur during the information of a pn junction diffusion and drift due to difference in concentration of charge carriers in the two regions of pn junction the electrons from n region diffuse through the junction into p region and holes from p region diffuse into n region the motion of charge carriers gives rise to diffusion current across the junction biasing of the pn junction pn junction forward biasing in forward biasing the applied voltage v mostly drops across the depletion region and the voltage drop drop across the p side and n side of the pn junction is negligible small the resistance of depletion region is very high as it has no free charge carriers in forward biasing the forward voltage opposes the potential barrier vb therefore the potential barrier height is reduced and width of depletion layer decreases the effective height of the potential barrier in forward biasing is vb minus v reverse biasing in reverse biasing the applied voltage v mostly drops across the depletion region of pn junction and its direction of voltage is same as that of potential barrier due to it the reverse bias voltage supports the potential barrier therefore the barrier height increases and width of depletion region increases the effective barrier height under reverse bias is vb plus v there are two methods of biasing the pn junction forward biasing reverse biasing characteristics of a pn junction diode forward characteristics reverse characteristics dynamic resistance or ac resistance of the junction diode dynamic resistance or ac resistance of junction diode or incremental resistance is defined as the ratio of a small change in voltage delta v applied across the pn junction to a small change in junction delta i pn junction diode as a rectifier pn junction diode as a half wave rectifier it's working based on the fact 
that the resistance of the pn junction becomes low when forward biased and becomes high when reverse biased ac to be rectified is connected to the primary p1 p2 of step down transformer s1 s2 is the secondary coil of the same transformer s1 is connected to the portion of p of the pn junction s2 is connected to the portion n through the load resistance r output is taken across the load resistance r during the positive half cycle of the input ac suppose p1 is negative and p2 is positive in induction s1 becomes positive while s2 is negative the pn junction is forward biased the resistance is very low the forward current flows during negative half cycle p1 is positive and p2 is negative thus s1 become negative and s2 is positive the pn junction is reverse biased it offers high resistance and hence there is no flow of current and no output across the load rectifier is a device which is used for converting alternating current or voltage into direct current or voltage a pn junction can be used as a rectifier in two ways half wave rectifier full wave rectifier types of junction diode junction diodes are of many types important among them are zener diode photo diode light emitting diode laser diode and solar cell transistor action or working of junction transistor pnp transistor in this transistor the emitter base junction is forward biased it means the positive pole of emitter base battery vee is connected to emitter and its negative pole to the collector base junction is reversed biased the resistance of emitter base junction is very low so the voltage of vee is small the resistance of the collector base junction is high the voltage vcc is large holes which are majority carriers in emitter are repelled towards base by positive potential on emitter due to battery vee resulting in emitter current ie the base being thin and lightly doped as low number density of electrons thus current in pnp transistor is carried by holes at the same time their concentration is maintained but in the external circuit the current is due to flow of electrons thus in this case ie is equal to ib plus ic in the base ie and ic flow in opposite directions pnp transistor npn transistor common base transistor characteristics the graphical representation of the variations among the various current and voltage variables of a transistor are called the transistor characteristics the common base transistor characteristics are of two types emitter or input characteristics collector or output characteristics concept of an amplifier 
An amplifier is a device which is used for increasing the amplitude of variation of alternating voltage or current or power. The amplifier thus produces an enlarged version of the input signal. Amplifier circuit using an NPN transistor. Here, base is common to both the input and output circuits. The input circuit is forward biased by battery VEE of voltage VEB. The output circuit is reverse biased by battery VCC of voltage VCB. RC is the load resistance connected in collector circuit. When no AC signal is applied to the input circuit but emitter base circuit is closed, then according to Kirchhoff's first law, IE is equal to IB plus IC. If VC is the collector voltage, then VCB is equal to VC plus ICRC or VC is equal to VCB minus ICRC. When the input signal is fed to the emitter base circuit, it will change the emitter voltage and hence the emitter current. This variation in collector voltage appears as an amplified output. Transistor as common base amplifier Transistor as common emitter amplifier Transistor as an oscillator a simple LC circuit can be used to produce electrical oscillations of desired frequency. The radio waves which are used as carrier waves in radio communication are produced by these circuits called oscillators. Advantages of semiconductor devices Semiconductor devices are much smaller in size and weight as compared to vacuum tubes. Semiconductor devices are not to be heated for emission of electrons. They start operating instantly. This saves a lot of electric power. A transistorized equipment does not get heated while operating. Therefore, no cooling arrangement is required. The semiconductor devices are more rugged then the vacuum tubes. They can withstand rough handling. Semiconductor devices have much longer life as compared to the life of vacuum tubes. Semiconductor devices are cheaper than vacuum devices. Semiconductor devices are low power devices. Disadvantages of semiconductor devices Semiconductor devices are very sensitive to changes of temperature, whereas the vacuum tubes are less sensitive. 
It is difficult to produce semiconductor devices with exactly identical characteristics. The noise level in semiconductor devices is higher than that of vacuum tubes. Semiconductor devices cannot handle as much power as vacuum tubes. In modern times, semiconductor devices are almost replacing vacuum tubes on account of their merits. Transistor as an oscillator. Here, inductor capacitor circuit is inserted in emitter base circuit for transistor which is forward biased with battery B1. A coil L1 is inserted in collector emitter circuit. If we close the key K, the collector attains positive potential due to which there will be a weak collector current which will start rising with time due to the inductane L1. Due to mutual induction, an EMF is induced in L which will charge the upper plate of capacitor with positive charge. Increasing magnetic flux is linked with L1 and hence with L. More EMF is induced in L charging the upper plate of capacitor with more positive charge and hence providing more support to the forward biasing of emitter base circuit. The process continues till the collector current becomes maximum or saturated. In this oscillator, the energy is being supplied by the battery B2 to the LC circuit at proper time and in proper phase. It means an oscillator DC is converted into AC.